my name's Millie Coombs. Um, I work at Atkins SNC Labelin, um, and I've worked there since 2015. Um, I'm currently a cybersecurity apprentice. It was a while ago now, probably about six years ago. Um, so I, I applied for apprenticeships in my last year of sixth form uh, alongside applying for university. So there was a lot of uh, applications flying out there. So um, I actually applied for three ap- apprenticeships at the time. And alongside that, I'd actually been conducting work experience with the company I currently work for. So that sort of put a good feeling in my head about uh, working for them Um, and eventually they were the ones that I accepted the offer for. Applying for apprenticeships um, at the time it was unique between the three apprenticeships so I'd had some sort of entrance tests for the other two but my experience applying for Atkins was um, a little bit out of the normal because I'd been conducting work experience with them and they'd seen me at a uh, school employability competition so that was sort of the application there um, instead of a written one it's not something where I I'd sort of conduct the same tasks every day so it's very project centric Um, so it generally depends on whatever project I'm conducting at the time which can be multiple ones but at the moment um, I'm conducting some data-driven sort of threat analysis and intelligence work which involves lots of open source research and using some internal data as well to analyze the current threat rates um, and advise a client on ways in which they can do that. So a lot's changed since 2018. Then I'd not long started my current degree apprenticeship um, and I'm now sort of coming towards the end of my fourth year hoping to graduate over the summer over that period as well. I, I So when I first started with the business I was working in the transportation arm and um, I was a rail telecoms design apprentice. Um, Yeah, so since then, actually, off the back of said interview in 2018, um, they put my name out uh, and I um, managed to win an award, which I have to thank Ali for nominating me for that. (laughs) And and that got the name out in our business because it's uh, quite a large one. Sometimes it's very difficult to know what's going on sort of from one place to the other. And I ended up sort of a couple of years down the line, actually, transitioning to the cyber business so yeah I've changed sort of job role quite a bit since since then and got something that aligns more with yourselves and also with my degree which is great Um, and I'm definitely thriving in it at the moment I've got a lot of uh, great colleagues who've been helping to mentor me um, and support me so developed a lot over the last year everyone was brilliant actually I didn't really know what to expect when I turned up to Crestcom but it was a, a very good day and got stuck in and uh, made a lot of contacts so it's much broader topic and I think much most people give it credit for particularly in what I do I really like the cutting edge methodologies and things that you can treat it with so um, in contrast to what I was doing before whereas uh, it was a lot of sort of tried and tested methods um, now we're given the opportunity to be creative and innovative in our problem solving which I really like um, I need to be kept on my toes and challenged. Otherwise, I have a habit of <laughs> losing interest in things. And I also like, obviously, the digital spheres ever growing. And alongside that, the threat landscape's increasing. Therefore, cybersecurity work has a growing impact and necessity in the world. Uh, I like being part of that and sort of being at the forefront of it um, when you take a proportion of society it's quite a small proportion that's actually well educated on that area Um, and it's a really nice thing to be a part of I particularly like working for Atkins I get a lot of exposure to some really interesting clients and projects which is something that's um, very valuable uh, and and it feels like really sort of making a contribution to things which is great everyone working from home it's been born out of a uh place of necessity unfortunately when that that all happened it was sort of go 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 work from home without necessarily having time to consider the security implications of that or uh, sort of knowing that that was even a thing I think a lot of businesses are, are not necessarily tuned into that at the level at which they need to be uh, and unfortunately there's people ready to pounce in that case and and they have in uh, in a big way but that's just changing tact of their uh, existing threat, I think, really.
something that I, I've always wanted to be a part of is improving the opinion around apprenticeships. Um, even over the time since I joined the organisation, I think the opinions um, are changing around it in a, in a good way, in a positive way, which is brilliant, really. I think it's it, it can only help. Um, I remember being part of a, a conversation when I went to the conference, gosh, three years ago now about sort of the skills gap and what the role of apprenticeships have in that skills gap um, and I think they're imperative to it the the skills and, and the um, market of employable young people you can gain from that is fantastic um, so I would definitely suggest anyone that wants to give it a go to do so um, and not see it as an alternative to university if you can't get into university it's um they're definitely up there as sort of the same you know if not I think sometimes you need some more soft skills to do an apprenticeship than you do to go to university so it's definitely not a step down in um, ability or competency and I think at the end of the day especially in in this industry if you're talking with clients or if you're even working with colleagues you need work experience it's invaluable and you don't necessarily get that if you if you go to university it's something that you you pick up day to day in a job as anyone who started working will understand and it just you know it makes you a fantastic candidate throughout and at the end of your apprenticeship and you've already got a job so that's great and a career really um so I've I've found it to be fantastic and you know really I feel like it's put me ahead um there's no replacement for the uh experience you get on the job even though the theoretical knowledge is important you pick that up as a part of an apprenticeship as well so I I receive a lot from university obviously because I'm, I'm studying at the moment so I pick up a lot from the material that's provided there in addition from that I get a lot of recommendations that are particularly uh, applicable to my role from colleagues and things um, got got a few different books uh, that I've either read or are on the list like I say applicable to what I do I can only I can only speak from from that side of things there's some pretty good YouTube videos and things out there if you if you can find reliable resources um, some basic intros pretty good to networking things like the transport layers and you know networking layers OSI stuff that is at the basic level of everything that's underpinned um, sorry that underpins everything that's a more complicated than that really so it's a good it's a good base to start from um and understanding how computers work and you understand the the platform on it but aside from that uh, i'm a big advocate of paying attention to threat vendor reports obviously they're not they're not going to give you the immediate um landscape but they are issued sort of any time from the, the latter part of the previous year to sort of now reviewing the the year just passed by um, and that can give you a really good insight into what's going on. I really like the one I'm on at the moment. So it maps quite well over to my role, which is good. It's got a lot of commonalities. That's what I was looking for um, to, my, to my role at the moment. And it helps me to understand vulnerabilities at a more granular level, which I, I didn't before. So the, the actual module is called ethical hacking, which sounds really exciting. You know, images of me in a dark room with a hoodie and you know, green lines running across the screen and things that's not quite all that but it is very insightful and it's given me an opportunity like I mentioned to study threats uh, a lot more which feeds into some of the threat intelligence work which I really enjoy doing so that would be probably my favorite I did like the digital forensics as well it felt very investigatory taking uh, images of files and reviewing them and things <laughs> so Matt Simpson is actually the colleague who um, found me out after the award um, and sort of helped me get in, you know, into the cyber practice with the help of Paul and John as well. Ash, who I work with a lot at the moment, is um, helping me and giving me lots of resources from which to read from, um, which I really appreciate and uh, Martin as well. Currently my final project I'm uh, creating a, a honeypot for a PLC. Both Mike and Ian have been fantastic with helping me with that as well so much appreciative.